Then, in November, something quite important happened. I'd been working on the game for over a year, and I started to realise that I wasn't really moving towards any final goal with the game. I was just kind of adding features and species as I thought necessary, and I, I wasn't really working towards any plan that I'd made in detail. I hadn't really decided how many features I wanted, I hadn't really decided how many species I wanted. I was just kind of adding things in, and there wasn't really an end in sight. And this was definitely obviously not a good thing, I should have planned this out better at the start, but I didn't. So at this time I decided that I needed to sit down and really plan out and determine the scope of the project, which was good. Except unfortunately it wasn't good, because on that day for some reason I was feeling a little bit too ambitious and I made the scope of the project much much bigger than I had ever planned. I started planning loads of new features that I had never even thought of before, I wanted things like birds to be transporting items across the world and dropping them off elsewhere for other species to then process and it was getting a bit crazy, um, but for some reason that's what I planned at the time. I also planned an upgrade system, I planned for loads and loads of species, and that was obviously quite a big mistake. Half a year later I did actually realise this mistake and I reduced the scope again to what it is now, but unfortunately this, this initial choice kind of led to quite a few features and models being started, that I then cut from the game, so it wasted quite a bit of time and I wish I hadn't done that, but I'll know better for next time. So because of this new plan, I started adding loads and loads of new species into the game and I kind of switched my approach from going through all the species one more time to instead just making all of the models for all the species first and then doing their behaviours later, so you'll see in a minute that over the next few months I just added loads and loads of new models. I also started expanding the UI in the game to prepare for all this new stuff that I had planned, so I added the music tab, I redid the species information panel again, and I also designed a new feature which allowed you to upgrade species, and although I did actually finish implementing this at some point, um, this was one of the features that eventually got cut from the game when I later reassessed the scope of the project. Over the next few months, as I said, I was just very concentrated on creating loads and loads of new models and moving into the start of 2017, more and more species were being added into the game. As I was making all these models, I also was implementing a few more features at the same time, such as the ability for fruit trees to produce actual fruit entities that fall off the tree and into the world, which could then be eaten by other animals. I also implemented a day-night cycle, and the ability to take control of any entity in the world. In February, my plan of adding all the new species into the game was in full swing, and I was also adding lots of new behaviours as well, so you can see here that the shop was expanding quite rapidly. During this month, I added the rabbit species, which had a movement system that I worked on for quite a long time. I also implemented the boars, and gave them the digging behaviour which allowed them to dig up potato plants, sending potatoes flying all over the place. And I also added the most complex animal that I had added into the game so far, which was the bees, which had the ability to build hives, and also produce honey in those hives, and this required me to add a whole new building functionality into the game. This trend of adding loads of new species continued on into March, with loads and loads of new models being added into the game as you can see, the most interesting being the birds with its flying behaviour, and this took just ages to work out, and it's one of the things that I'm most proud of in the game. The birds, of course, fly around and have the ability to land on trees, and they also build nests, which used that building component that I worked on in the previous month for the bees. There were also just a few little tiny UI improvements that month, such as the filtering by category option in the shops. Going into April, not much had changed, I was still just making loads and loads of new models for the game, mostly for animals, and unfortunately a lot of these aren't actually in the game anymore, I had to remove a lot of them just because of how long it would have taken to make all the behaviours for these animals, but I do intend on adding some of them back into the game after release, hopefully I'll have a bit more time to add some more species then, and obviously the ones that I've made the models for will be first on the list. I think one thing that I definitely improved over the two years was my low poly modelling skills, so I think these last models were actually my best models, but unfortunately they were also the first to be cut from the game. One of the new species that did manage to stay in the game was the beaver, and this is actually my favourite species in Equinox now, and I've shown you it many times before, but the beaver has the ability to cut down trees, and it then uses the sticks to create dens in the water. 
At this stage I had pretty much finished all of the animal models that I had planned, and I think I must have been inspired by working my way through the checklist of models, because I decided to add an in-game checklist as well to show you how far through unlocking all the content in the game you are. By May, all of the animal models were finished and in the game, and so I switched to concentrating on the plant models and the animal behaviours. So for example, in May I implemented the sheeping behaviour, which you can see here with the sheep. I also implemented a charging behaviour for the goats so that they charge into fruit trees and knock all the fruit off the trees. And I also started implementing probably the most complex behaviour in the game, which is the hunting. You can see the fox here carrying out the hunting behaviour, and it chases down nearby prey, and then it attacks them with the new attacking system that I implemented. And when the animal dies, the animal drops meat, and then the fox can pick up the meat and take it back to its home area, where all the foxes can feed from it. Also, a certain UI panel got yet another makeover, although to be fair, this was actually the last time, um, unless of course I decide to redo it again before release. Moving into the summer of this year, I once again came to the realisation that the project was just kind of going on and on, and uh, I still wasn't really getting any closer to finishing it, so I had another sit down with myself and did a bit of brainstorming, and I decided that I really needed to start moving towards some sort of end product, so I cut down the scope for the game quite a bit, I really nailed out the details of exactly what I have, exactly what needs to be done, and planned in quite a lot of detail how exactly I was going to achieve that and what I was going to implement in what order. And again, obviously this is really something I should have done right at the beginning of the project, and I definitely will do this for future games. To mark this new beginning, I again decided to wipe the slate clean and remove everything from the game so that I could add the content back in species by species, working through each one one final time. So in July, armed with my new concrete plan of all the species that I needed for each biome, I started working on the plant species, creating the new models for any plants that were missing them, and doing all the settings and environmental preferences for the various species. You might remember at this time that I also tried to come up with some diagrams to help to balance all of the environmental stuff, but I never actually got that fully working in the end sadly, so I just had to work out all the settings manually. I was also still implementing a few behaviours for the animals, such as for the frogs which can jump and catch butterflies, and for the ducks which can dive down and eat seaweed. In August I pretty much finished making all of the necessary plant models for Equinox, and I continued working a bit more on the animal behaviours, such as the rabbits, which can pull carrots out of the ground, throwing them up into the air and catching them, the squirrels, which can jump into the branches of the trees, and I also added a stinging behaviour for the bees, which got a little bit out of hand. As well as all that, I also changed the system of how you unlock new species using the evolving system, um, in an attempt to make it a little bit more deliberate, so that you actually had to choose when you wanted to start evolving a new species. For the next month I was mostly just working on finishing up all of the UI in the game, polishing it up and improving anything that needed improving. So for example I added the blurry background effect, where if you look through a panel uh, the background is blurred. I also made a change to how trait editing works, to try and make it a little bit more user friendly and I changed the shop system so that you could now place things directly from the shop instead of needing to go into the inventory first. There was also one final animal species added that month, which was the peacock, and these birds occasionally get a little bit angry and charged each other with their tail feathers up. Then in October, just a couple of months ago, I was still doing quite a lot of tidy up work to do with the UI and also just fixing other loose ends and at the end of October I started the process of going through all of the species one by one for one final time and doing all of the balancing for them, fixing any glitches and making any final improvements, and just generally trying to polish up everything to do with each species. The balancing process also took up most of November, which brings us up to the current month, December, where I've been working on the audio system and fixing any final glitches, and I also added one final behaviour to the turtle, which allows it to hide in its shell when predators are close. And with that, the game is pretty much complete. 
The balancing is all done, all the species are finished, all the features and behaviours are in the game, the UI is done and all of the tasks have been added. All that's left to do now is a lot of testing, probably an equal amount of bug fixing and a few optimizations that I want to make to the engine. I'll also obviously need to be doing some marketing while all that's going on and then finally, after a very long long journey, Equinox will be released early in 2018. So thank you all very much for joining me on this journey and I'm very much looking forward to reaching the end of this adventure together with you guys in the new year. With that, I'm going to end this video, so I wish you all a very very happy new year and I will see you all in the next video as I start taking the final steps towards the Equilinox release.